We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to do. We don't laugh anymore. What was all of it for? But we don't talk anymore like we used to do. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. It's Nate from Echo City Music Lab. Today I'm doing a piano tutorial for We Don't Talk Anymore by Charlie Puth featuring Selena Gomez. The whole song, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, it's all the exact same chord progression. On the recorded version, it's done on guitar. I'm gonna show you three different ways to play this progression on piano in three different levels of complexity. So you can pick whatever one is best for you and run with it for your version of this song. Let's get into it. Okay, so that chord progression that repeats throughout the song is A major, B major, C sharp minor, G sharp minor. Just those four chords over and over again. For the first option, we're gonna do those chords exactly how they're voiced on the guitar, just we're not gonna do any of the fancy fast rhythms. So for the A chord, the left hand is going to do an A and an E and a C sharp in the right hand. Now notice that this is just a regular old A major chord. It's just the outside notes, the fifths we're doing with the left hand in that middle note, the third we're doing with the right hand. It's a really nice voicing. Actually, come to think of it, I'm gonna use my second finger on that C sharp because it'll flow better with where we're going. So for the B, we're gonna do left hand does B and F sharp and the right hand's gonna do a, a D sharp. So that's gonna be with the third finger. So just stepping up from the second finger to the third finger. Now we're gonna step up again to the C sharp minor. So that's gonna be a C sharp in the left hand and also a G sharp in the left hand. And then the right hand note is going to be a E. And notice I just stepped up to my fourth finger for that. And then finally for the G sharp minor, I'm gonna come down here, the left hand's gonna do a G sharp, a D sharp, and then the right hand thumb hits a B. We're in four, four times. So each of these measures gets four counts. One, two, three, four. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to do. We don't laugh anymore. So then it loops around again. And of course, this works for the other parts of the song, like I just heard you found the one you've been looking. You've been looking for. And I should also mention, I put a link to the chords and lyrics chart down in the description. So even though it's the same chords over and over again, if you do want to do a full cover with all the singing, you can use that to see how the chords line up with all the different words. And there are just a couple of spots where it's actually going to break the pattern. Like at the end of pre-choruses, instead of going to the G sharp minor, you just stay on that C sharp minor for an extra measure. The chord chart will help with that too. I'm going to say two more things about this before we move on to the next version. If the fingers I chose here for the right hand don't feel natural to you, you can totally do it another way. You could even just hop the the same finger around on each note. It probably won't end up sounding quite as smooth, but if that's easiest for you, go for it. Also, this is the basic harmonic framework for the instrumental. In the third version, we're gonna do the really fast arpeggio on it, but if you wanna do something in between and just add a little bit of rhythm by breaking up the notes, maybe you do. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to or whatever else you come up with. Okay, for the second version, we're gonna forget about the guitar arrangement and just ask ourselves, how would a piano player do this song? I wanna get a quarter note pulse going so we get some of the energy that on the recording comes from the drums. Now, if we take our first version and just do it in quarter notes, it sounds a little too bouncy. But if we only do it on the right hand single notes, it sounds a little empty. So what if we just did full on three note chords in the right hand while just holding down those left hand fifths like we were doing before? For the A chord, it's going to be A, C sharp, and E, so that's just the same two notes your left hand has been playing, uh, plus that middle note your right hand was playing before. For the B major chord, you're going to do B, D sharp, and F sharp, and then B and F sharp in the left hand. C sharp minor chord, we've got the C sharp, E, and G sharp. Left hand's got the C sharp and G sharp. And finally, for the G sharp minor, I'm actually going to do an inversion on that one. And so in the right hand, I'm gonna do a B, a D sharp, and a G sharp in the right hand, while the left hand does those fifths that we did before with G sharp and D sharp. Notice you can just keep your right hand pinky on the G sharp and then just pivot down like that using your first finger and second finger for the B and D 
sharp. I just heard you found the one you've been looking, you've been looking for. Wish I would have known that wasn't me. And if you want, you can give it a little bit more energy and movement by adding just a little bit more rhythm to the left hand. So let's start thinking in eighth notes. So that's going to use the ands between the beats. One and two and three and four and. And I'm going to put an extra left hand hit on the and after four. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to do. We don't laugh anymore. On that G sharp minor, I just ended up adding another left hand hit on the and after two. So like one and two. And three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so now I'm going to hit the third option. And that's going to be literally recreating that fast guitar part on the recording and just translating it to piano. It's definitely pretty tricky and it's even trickier to sing it and play it at the same time. But if you check that out and said, oh no, I can't do that, I would encourage you to try. The secret for learning something like this is to just do it really, really slow. You know, spend 10 minutes just doing it super slow and then stop and sleep on it. And then come back the next day and do it slow a bunch of times again sleep on it and there's something about sleeping on it and doing it a little bit over a couple days that just like makes it click in your brain 10 minutes three days in a row is way better than 30 minutes one day so we're going back to the arrangement that we had in the first version where the left hand is doing the fifths and the right hand is just stepping up with the thirds for reasons that will become apparent in just a minute i'm going to do different fingering for the left hand though so for the a fifths i'm going to do five and one for the b fifths i'm going to do four and one for the C sharp fifths, I'm going to do three and one. And for the G sharp fifths, I'm going to do five and two. And maybe just practice stepping through that a few times just to get a feel for that new fingering. There's a little bit of stretching here. And the overall vibe here is to just do an arpeggio that goes around in circles from the bottom to the top, then jumping back down to the bottom. So left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Just do that a bunch of times and get a feel for it. But every measure, there's one strange little moment. So let's actually map it out. And based on how we were counting it before, these are 16th notes. So we're dividing the beat into four now. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. I'm going to play and count it slow. White means left, yellow means right. One E and a. So that was the one measure of A before it switches to the one measure of B where the pattern starts over again. Notice that it ended on a single left hand note and when you start the pattern again for the next measure, you've got two more left hand notes. So the pattern is really consistent except for that moment when you're crossing over the measure to play the new chord. I'm gonna play two measures of this now with the chord change. One E and a two E and a three E. And that right there is why I had changed the left hand fingers, because it allows you to step from the last 16th note of the first measure on A to the first 16th note of the next measure on B without having to hop a finger. It allows you to actually fit that rhythm in and make it smooth. Another way to think about this is at the end of every measure, you play the root of that chord one last time before stepping into the root of the new chord. Ba-doom, ba-doom, ba-doom. And the one place that, despite my finger changes, we still have to hop a finger is from the G sharp to the A. But it works out. So here's a slow pass all the way around. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. So take all the time you need speeding that up. And I'm adding the sustain pedal just to smooth it out with just a quick lift every time I change the chord. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to do. We don't laugh anymore. What was all of it for? 
Thanks for watching, y'all. If you haven't already, take a second to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you'll know when I put out more of these videos. Give it a like and let me know in the comments um, what other songs you want to see. Bye for now.